So I know that video tutorials can be really, really helpful, especially in a niche like finite element analysis, but I've really found that some of these simulations can get a bit boring and really may not grab the attention of some of the more casual viewers out there, and I understand that. So I really wanted to try and simulate something a bit more practical using, of course, a well thought out scientific experiment. Yes. Ready? Yes. Can you see the scale? Yes. That's right, I'm gonna apply all the knowledge from my engineering education to pop the damn cap off of this beer bottle. So the first thing we're gonna need for this project is CAD files for everything that we're wanting to model. So the first thing being this beer bottle, and I've gone on grabcad.com. This is a website where you can get free CAD files, and I've heard it best called the Pinterest for engineers. It's actually really addicting to just look through the libraries and stuff, but here's a bottle and cap that I found that I'm gonna be using. Make sure you note the authors down here and just show your support. You can like their stuff. This stuff can take a long time to, to create, so it's good to support them. And next, uh, we have bottle openers. And I didn't just choose one. I decided to get a selection of a few different bottle openers. So we have four. And the first being like a keychain bottle opener, where I get rid of the Dodge logo. The second being a corkscrew. So this is like a wine opener, but it also has a bottle opener at the top. And the third being a Batman style bottle opener because I've heard Batman really likes Guinness. And then last is a one handed bottle opener. And this is a design that's meant for somebody that has like an amputated arm. They only have one arm. That's actually pretty interesting. I've gone ahead and opened them all up here. So here's the Dodge one. Here's the one handed one, the wine one, and here's the Batman one. And this is LS Prepost, the free preprocessor slash mesher slash CAD modifier, whatever you want to call it. It's not really meant for using CAD and meshing, but I'm going to try and do everything through this program because it's free to use. And I've actually found out it's not too bad. And now that we have all the CAD downloaded, we need to go through and clean up any of the edges that look like they need to be cleaned up in order to prepare for meshing. So things like this down here, we have these really small parts. Um, and we need to decide what type of mesh we're going to do for different types of parts because really on like this corkscrew, the only part that really matters is this part down here. Like these arms can probably just be shells and be tied to it. And we also need to determine what we're going to do uh, with something like this where you can mesh it either as a solid or a shell and just give it a thickness. So we'll go through and do that. Any of these thin parts like this, we'll probably just mesh as a shell and give it a midline extrusion extrusion thickness but this won't take too long probably so uh then we'll get to meshing six and a half hours later so due to how long it took to go through all the cad and process it and then mesh the bottle the cap all the openers and then set up all of the simulations i'm really just gonna jump after i meshed everything and i'll make a full video on the full process of how i created all this stuff how i use prepost to go through the, the geometries and the mesh and all these different things that's gonna be a separate video more details but for now i'm just jumping after i've meshed everything so moving forward the cap and the bottle are shown here after meshing so i focused all my attention pretty much on the cap most part that i focused on the bottle was the lip uh this was due to the fact that there was no lip in the cad so i had to create this this is man-made i did take measurements on an actual beer bottle and got the measurements for the height of it and the total width and scaled the bottle to match those and also scaled the cap to match it. So it's all been measured to be you know, realistic. I didn't focus too much attention on the mesh quality of the bottle. I modeled it as rigid, so it's not gonna move in place. It's constrained in space because it's really not part of the analysis. It's just there as a structure. So as you see down here on the bottom, there's some pretty gross looking elements. I don't really care about that. Uh, and if you watch the other video, you'll see what I'm talking about. And the cap is here. I focused on kind of getting these clean lines around the edge so that there's a nice bending surface. Also focused on maintaining the geometry at these different components. And this was all done in pre-post, so it is possible to have a lot of control over your mesh. Uh, you don't want these things to auto mesh because you'll have these like awful looking elements. I, I went through the pain. Looking at materials, like I said, the bottle is rigid and constrained in space. And the cap is modeled as a shell with a steel material that is 0.22 millimeters thick. I got this value from doing some research online, which showed that bottle caps are either a type of aluminum or steel. Most commonly are steel nowadays. 
and the thickness varied quite a bit over history. I chose 0.22 because it's in that range that I saw and it also looked fairly realistic in the simulations that I did. So I did a lot of iterations with this, probably upwards of 20 iterations of different types of materials and thicknesses. But this is only part of the equation. So if we want to model something being popped off, uh, it's not actually on. So this is bottled as before the bottle cap is compressed onto the bottle. So the first thing I had to do was set up a simulation to compress this down. And what I did, created this little ring out here, which compressed down a prescribed distance. And then what I would do is look at the, you know, like the stresses, make sure everything looked okay. Look at physical bottles, see how much physical bottle caps are compressed before you open them and determine the point that is realistic. So I'll play through this. I took the nodes for the bottle cap right here at 11 milliseconds. It looked like this. Out of all my revisions, this was the most realistic, looked the best. So this is what I did. I took the nodes from here, export them and import them as the baseline position of the nodes in the cap for popping the cap off of the bottle. So this is the baseline thing that we'll use with the openers. Now we can move on to the openers. So this first one is the traditional one. That's like a keychain. This is a thin CAD file that I got. There are two of these, this one and the Batman one. Any thin parts like this, I modeled as shell tria elements or triangular elements and gave them a thickness that was representative of measurements that I took on the CAD. So this one had a thickness of two millimeters thick and I can visualize that by going here to appearance thick, look like this. So if I click it off, so it's just a mathematical thickness. All of the bottle openers that were in contact with the bottle, so what I mean by that is parts that were meaningful to the experiment, were modeled as steel, a map piecewise linear plasticity model, and I'll have the properties show up here. Had an elastic modulus of 200 gigapascals, Poisson's ratio of 0.25, yield stress of 0.35. All these things are very basic. Feel free to leave your hate mail in the comments. This wasn't meant to be a super serious test. This was just for fun. And the next one that I have is the corkscrew. So here I modeled the red part and the yellow kind of corkscrewy part as solid tetrahedral elements. This is because this was much thicker and I want to make sure that we are getting uh, realistic responses at these parts as it's opening the bottle. These other parts are modeled as shells here and here, and they are constrained to the yellow part. So these are actually rigid parts. So the yellow one is rigid and notably connected to the red, and these parts are rigidly constrained to this rigid part. So this red part is the only part that has steel properties, so that could have implications on how it opened, but Again, this is for fun. The next one is the Batman bottle opener, and this one, similar to the traditional one, is modeled with only shell tria elements. And this actually was much thinner. This was only a thickness of one millimeter. And you can see that in the simulations, it bends pretty easily. So I don't know if that's real or not. I just went off of what the CAD was. And maybe it's a super duper thin bottle opener somebody can get. And the last one is the one handed one. This was solely modeled with hexahedrals and pentahedrals. The hexahedrals are like cubes. Pentahedrals are when you start out with a triangle and move to a square base like this. And just to reiterate, all this was done in LS Prepost, so anything you can't do meshing in it can. It wasn't not great, but it's not awful either, so it was doable. This is what we got for the openers, and then we'll move forward into the opening and how I set up those simulations. And here's the moment we've all been waiting for, the setup for doing this thing instead of just creating all of the stuff. So here is the keychain bottle opener. It's positioned into where you would pop off a cap of a bottle, and this has been done for all of them. Um, I'm gonna go through what I did for all the setups. So I applied a force versus time curve. It's just a linear curve. So it's a 50 millisecond curve going from zero to 100 newtons at a point on each of the openers. So this one only has one point that's here. And uh, what we're doing is looking at what time 
that the cap pops off and then corresponding that to the force and that's the force that it takes to pop the cap off there were a few other ways to do it but this was the way that i thought was easiest and best like i said this is a point load just visualized here just moving upward for this one so in ls Dyna, it's just called a load node point and then you define a the direction of the local coordinate system and i have a local coordinate system defined in this direction and then you have a load curve which is shown here and this is just a linear curve with this in newtons this is force in newtons and this is milliseconds of time and here is that local coordinate system so this force was in the local z-axis of this so this one was pretty straightforward since it was just a is the most straightforward design just a single load point here and uh going upward and the next one is the corkscrew this one was probably the most complicated actually because or maybe not, I don't know. I had to split up the load on these two arms, so I kind of grabbed onto these wine openers and determined where you'd be holding it, and it's just right in the middle. You know, I probably didn't have to do that, but I did. And uh, so I split the load up between these two points, so each of these is maxing out at 50 newtons instead of 100. Add them together, you get 100. So um, that's what I did with this one and positioned it. This one was probably a little more difficult to position than the others because it's a little more rounded off here so that was a bit of a challenge the next one is the batman one this one was actually uh had to do a little testing with it so i have a load going up here and a load going down here so you grab it with your fingers here or i guess unless you want to stab yourself you're kind of pushing down on this end and pulling up on this end you've all probably seen these type of bottle openers so I did is split the force up, so 50 newtons up, 50 newtons down. That just made the most sense. In all of this, I do want to say that I did do quite a few revisions. You can probably see up here, 5G1. Oh, it was probably like 20 revisions for the general setup of how I was going to implement all this. And this turned out pretty good. The next one is the one-handed one. And this was pretty similar to the corkscrew. I just applied two different points where your fingers would be here and for 50 newtons. Are up to 50 newtons so it's zero to 50 again it's a linear curve of increasing force and so what you do when you open this is you kind of put your thumb here and your two uh your pointer finger here and your middle finger here and then you just squeeze it's actually a pretty cool concept i suggest if you see any of these you know if if you, if you see them out in the wild pick one up it's pretty cool so that's what we did for these and then i brought them into blender i finally figured out how to do this and i rendered them out and we're going to take a look at the results here is the keychain bottle opener rendered in blender so what we have to do is correspond to point in time that the cap is being popped off by the bottle opener and since the bottle opener is being driven by a force versus time curve with a linearly increasing force we need to determine that point in time and what we can do is visually just guess at when the cap is being popped off Another thing we can do is plot something like contact force between the cap and the bottle or between the bottle opener and the cap and see when there's a large spike in contact force because that's going to tell us when the cap is being popped off. And that's what I did. And this is one of those plots. And what we're going to be looking at for all of these is just this large drop in force. We're not looking at this in terms of how much force it requires because this is contact force really unreliable for this aspect of it. It's also really noisy and the back of the cap may still be in contact with the bottle when the front pops off. So you can't really rely on it too much for this. And here's the animation. Up top, I have force and newtons and pound force, followed by the peak force where the cap pops off. And seven pounds of force actually seems pretty reasonable. Next is the corkscrew. I've got a nice chrome metal look to it. <laughs> And here is the force plot for the contact force of the cap to the bottle. And this was the most noisy force data of the three. So it was really hard to find this point in time. So I kind of lined it up with the point in the simulation where the cap was popping off. This was kind of a mix between visual and then this. The corkscrew maxes out at around 11 pounds. And this is a little higher than the scientific experiment I showed at the beginning of the video with the cargo scale. 
And here is Batman's bottle opener. This one was pretty cool. It's pretty thin though, a lot more thin than the other ones. And then here's the force plot for the contact force that we aligned to get the force number at this point in time. And again, this is this large drop in contact force here. And there's a lot of dips and drops and those are just because the, the cap is rubbing against the bottle at these points. And then here's the animation. This one, there's a lot of force happening and it smashes the bottle cap on the way out because once the cap pops off, the force is still active on these open openers, so they just fly away. And then last is the one-handed bottle opener. This one is pretty cool. And here is the force plot for the contact force. This was much later than the other ones. So it was like 35 milliseconds. And the force maxes out at the highest, obviously because of this. Maxes out at around 16 pounds. So this was much higher, and I guess that makes sense given that you're squeezing and you really don't have that that moment arm to help. I also set up a simulation to check that these force values were pretty realistic. And this simulation takes a beam at the same area where I apply the load in the previous simulation and pull on the end of the beam a set displacement over time curve. So it's, you know, 10 millimeters normal to the opener over 50 milliseconds. And then I extracted the forces from the beam and cross-checked that with the forces that I got from the previous method. I did this for all of them, but I could not get reliable force data for the other three. It was very noisy. I tried all kinds of things to do this. This is one of the reasons why I didn't want to mess with this because uh, this method, it needs a lot of fine tuning and I, I just didn't want to put more time into it. I've been making this video for a long time, but I did get pretty good results for this one and it actually lines up pretty dang close with the other method, right around 30 Newtons of force. That's pretty good to know. It stinks that the other ones were very noisy, but that's just how it goes sometimes. So recapping through the results, the keychain bottle opener took 6.7 pounds to pop off, corkscrew 11 pounds, Batman eight and a half pounds, and then the one-handed one was the highest at 15.8 pounds. This was pretty fun to do. It took a long time to do though. If anyone wanted to replicate what I just did, I would have to suggest either trying the keychain one, the Batman one, or the one-handed one. Just stay away from creating this corkscrew one. It just took a long time. I would also be willing to share my simulation files if anyone wants to do this, because it, it just takes a long time to go through and mesh all this stuff and do it. Uh, let me know in the comments. Also, I've been working on this project probably for since August. This thing took a long time to do, way longer than I thought, and videos like this take a lot of effort to go through and create. So please let me know if this was interesting, if you enjoyed this, if this was helpful. You know, I can't just sit in front of my webcam like some people and just talk into the camera and then edit it and take an hour to do it. These things take days and days to create. So any feedback is really appreciated. If you liked it, leave a like. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. But I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.